Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Jeb Williams. Jeb is the Wildlife Division Chief here at Game and Fish. We're going to talk about our winter so far, and if our wildlife are doing well, Jeb, uh, it's been quite a winter so far. Yeah, it's been a bit of a ride so far, Tom. In, in December, I don't, we haven't had a, we have not had, well, just from a record standpoint, I was just reading where the, we, we did break uh, some records as far as snowfall uh, early on anyways, for, to the 1st of January. And sure. so it's been, a, it's been a wild ride with the combination of lots of snow and lots of cold and lots of wind. Yeah, and it seems like we can't get a break from, from the cold weather either. Exactly, so. and so we've had all those things combined and, and obviously I don't, have to, I don't have to tell anybody that those, that's not a recipe for, for good wildlife conditions to get through the winter. It seems like geographically nowhere other than maybe Fargo yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like, you know, maybe the extreme, uh, you know, kind of southeast part of North Dakota is, is not in too tough a shape, which is, uh, yeah, which is a little unusual. Um, and then the southwest part of the state, the western part of the state, they, they have winter now, but they, they did not have as much winter early on, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, they basically got through the month of December with not a lot of stress, but then they did get in on the, on the Christmas, Christmas blizzard. Um, but you know, for the central part of the state, it is it's been it's been a it's been an intense ride since the very much you know the end of the end of November till till today. Well, let's get into it. Um, what are you hearing from your field staffs so far? How are wildlife populations weathering? Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, we've heard we've heard a lot of reports of uh, you know dead deer already, dead pheasants already. Um, you know, conditions like that, that uh, again, that don't bode well for when we're really pretty early on in the winter. We have a lot of winter left in North Dakota and for, sure. for our wildlife to be in the, in the type of condition and really kind of survival mode right now, like we were visiting about before, deer using roadways already and, you know, basically just in that, in that survival mode, which, which you tend to more often than not see in, in say, end of January, February, but seeing it already in December is, uh, is not good. I'm guessing depredation reports are one of your major benchmarks for how the deer herd is doing. Uh, how are we marking depredation reports so far? Well, we're up, obviously. Uh, you know, we're I think statewide right now. We're and th and this is a very 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 much a moving number. Uh, it'll change. It'll change after we're done talking within the next couple hours, I'm sure. But we're approaching uh, approaching 50 depredation cases so far statewide. And you know, again, that's gonna that's gonna increase fast, especially with this cold spell kicking in. And and January is is usually the month when we start hearing from uh, some individual producers that are having problems uh, with deer. Where it's been a little different this year, where we started hearing from some in, Dece in December too, with the tough conditions out there. So, uh, but so far, uh, you know. I think most cases we've been able to deal with the best we can, um, dealing with mostly, uh, you know, some pretty patient producers out there, which is a key to it. This is a, a combination effort between producers and the department to help to help relieve some of those problems. We're not going to be able to fix those problems in a winter situation, but our goal is to try to relieve some stress on that landowner while also still, you know, providing for those deer in those in those areas too. Without a lot of areas of CRP that have been taken out and shelter belts, for that matter, how are pheasant populations faring? Well, our, our pheasant, you know, everybody, you know, probably knows from this year. I mean, pheasant numbers were down uh, this last year for whatever reason, variety of reasons that there was not a good hatch uh, on the landscape. And, and we know, we've been through this obviously in North Dakota before with tough winter conditions and, you know, pheasants, uh, pheasants struggle through those. They're a non-native bird, obviously, and so they, they struggle through our tough winter weather. But what, what will be challenging now is, is on the back side of this, is in the, when we come in the spring, when all the snow is gone, and, and we do, we, do we, have, we have less grass on the landscape uh, than what we've had in the past, which means a slower recovery period for pheasant populations. And so that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be very, very interesting as we move ahead to watch, to watch how they rebound. But we suspect that it's not, definitely not gonna be as quick as, as, as what they've been able to do in the past. It seems like, Jeb, when we get lots of snow like this early, people start talking about feeding wildlife on their own. A lot of the outdoor websites are proponents of doing this and things. Is it a good idea? 
Well, you know, it really depends. We, we understand that it, that it really tugs at people's hearts, you know, to see some critters doing bad. They think they maybe need to feed some of these critters. And, and you know, I, I'm not saying that people, that people can't help in, a, in a, small po a small population of critters. They, they probably can if they, if they do it right. Now, you know, from a statewide angle, obviously that's why we don't do it. Um, because it is tough to make a difference, you know, from a statewide perspective. And, and there are some things, again, that people need to keep in mind if they are going to do that. And, you know, the number one feature for, to getting critters through the winter months is good winter cover. Pheasants are a good example. They usually don't die of not enough to eat. They usually die of, of, of tough winter conditions, suffocation, those types of things. And deer, you know, deer for the most part, kind of the same thing. And so if they're, you know, whether we're talking about pheasants, whether we're talking about deer, if a person does choose to feed, make sure you're feeding in an area where those critters don't have to travel very far from that winter cover. And then one of the things when we're especially talking about deer is that people need to pay attention to what they're feeding and how much they're feeding. Um, you know, deer di di deer's digestive system is quite a bit different, and it needs to t it needs some time to get used to some of the some of the food that they're eating. Whether you know, for example, might be corn. Uh, corn has a tendency to to be really hot and you know really tough for a deer's di uh, digestive system, and so over time it can actually do more harm than good, and so. People need to pay attention to that and feed in, in small amounts, but then also be prepared. If you're wanting to feed, you need to be prepared to feed the entire winter. And sometimes that can be challenging. It can get why? Well, it can get it it can get exp, it can get expensive. Obviously, I mean, if if you start doing it, it can get expensive. But the reason that you need to feed all winter is is you get those deer habituated into that area, and then if you stop feeding, obviously those deer are going to be burning up a lot of energy and, and a lot of a lot of calories looking for that food source, and then going to a different area looking for another food source, and so people need to be prepared to. Uh, to, to gut it out for the entire winter and that can get expensive those deer can let their friends know a little bit that there's a good food source over there and then so you might start out feeding five and then by the end of uh, end of march or whenever whenever winter kind of ends you might have a lot more there this might be a good time jeb to remind uh, snowmobilers that these wildlife populations are stressed enough the way it is to avoid areas of, of good cover and things like that and not stress them out any more than need be. Exactly. Cons you know, again, conserving, the, conserving energy for, for deer is key right now and, and keeping in that good winter cover and conserving as much fat and energy as they possibly can to get them through this next, the, this next stretch, as tough as that's going to be for some critters. But, so they don't need any, um, any other distractions and snowmobiles can obviously be a distraction. Again, we understand and realize that snowmobiles are a very fun recreational activity and and I would I would venture to say that the majority of people on snowmobiles have no intention of harming right. and disturbing wildlife and, and but sometimes they just happen to to come into that situation where they might be riding in an area. And so if they do or if they are riding in an area and all of a sudden are seeing some pheasants or seeing some deer, just just kind of back out of there. Just just get out of there as quickly as you can and that's that's gonna ease the stress on those critters that are in that area. Right now we just keep our fingers crossed for about three weeks of thirty or forty degree temperatures. Yeah, exactly. It's that's just we're we're in for a ride and we just yeah, we we're gonna have to deal with it. All right, Jim, thanks. Thank you. The 2017 legislature is now in session and there are bound to be a few outdoor bills involved. If you plan to follow the session and track bills pertaining to the outdoors, here's a very valuable tool. The legislative page on the Game and Fish website. It'll give you a reference number for each bill, a brief explanation of the bill and how it might affect outdoors men and women, and we'll also have links to contact your lawmaker in every legislative district in North Dakota. Log on to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. You'll find the legislative page under the seasonal shortcuts on the home page. For Jeb Williams and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.